One minute. One minute just went by. It was only 60 seconds. But it seemed like a long time, didn't it? Didn't it? When you've got just one minute left, and you're at school and you're taking a test, and your teacher says, okay, one minute, one more minute, and that's it, you think, oh my God, there's no time. One minute is just not enough time, and then bam, time's up. But on the other hand, you're doing sit-ups, you're in PE, and your teacher says, okay, you got another minute, and you gotta do these crunches, you gotta knock them out for another minute, and you're thinking, oh my God, that's a long time, I got a whole nother minute that I have to do this. <laughs> During the one minute that you all sat there staring at me, probably thinking that I was more than a little bit strange, nothing happened, right? Wrong. A lot happened, but you just didn't see it. In those 60 seconds, somewhere right here, right here in the Bay Area, right here in Palo Alto, a child is right now facing another day without any food. A middle school student just got high on some drugs. And a runaway teenager is spending yet another day living in the streets. Now, none of you in this room are like those young people I just described, and for that I'm very, very glad. But even though your lives are so much better, I want you to never forget that there are young people, kids your age, who look just like you, who are every day suffering. It's important that you never forget about them because out of sight, out of mind. And that means if you don't see someone or something, then it's not in your mind, meaning you're not gonna think about that someone or something. And if you don't think about that someone or something, you won't do anything about that someone or something. You'll get so comfortable with the world that you see around you that you won't be motivated to make things better for others who are very uncomfortable. Now this conference today, this is a big deal. You are here today because you are among the best and the brightest in the country. Do you understand the words that just came out of my mouth? You are among the best and the brightest I didn't say in the city, and I didn't say in the county. I said in the country. You are smart, you are hardworking, and quite frankly, I am honored to be here with you. Now, you may not want to hear this, but you, the best and the brightest, are our future leaders. It is to you that the world is soon going to look to solve the grave problems that are facing us today. Your responsibility to lead starts right now. And I'm sorry about that, but that's the way it is. When you are smart, when you are creative, when you cherish education, that makes you a leader. Webster defines leader as one who has influence or power, one who has the capacity to build or lead, one in charge or in command of others, one who guides. But that definition, you see, doesn't go nearly far enough. That's, there's one more thing that you must do to be a good leader, and it's a big one. It's something called demonstrating courage. A good leader is courageous. A good leader is heroic. So what's a hero? Back to the dictionary. A hero is a person of great strength and courage. Any person admired for courage, nobility, or exploits. Any person admired for qualities or achievements and regarded as an ideal or a model. So let's see. We know heroes. We even know, we know super, superheroes, right? Uh, Spider Woman, Spider Man, Catwoman, The Incredibles, the superheroes. That these are the, the folks who jump right into the thick of things where they have no fear. They have no hesitation. They fight off the bad guys and gals and they save the planet. They're fearless and absolutely nothing scares them. But here's the thing. They aren't heroes. They aren't heroic at all. Not one of them. You see, it doesn't take courage to tackle something without any fear, without any thought for your own safety. I mean, that's bravery, but in a mindless kind of way. What really takes courage is taking a stand when you are terrified, 
when you are scared to death about what might happen to you. Heroes are the young people like you and adults like your teachers and your parents who when they're tremendously afraid are still willing to go forward. Being heroic means standing up for what is right. It means speaking out when those around you are silent. Being heroic means when you see someone being bullied or being made the butt of cruel jokes, you speak out and put a halt to that behavior. And we all know how hurtful it is to be made fun of. We know how cruel young people can be to one another. And imagine how much hurt a person must feel when others make fun of her because she happens to be short, or he is overweight, or she is gay, or he is an immigrant who speaks with a heavy accent, or she has a physical disability. Such insults can be devastating, and oftentimes people are so scarred they commit suicide. To be heroic, you don't need to shed blood. Heroes don't need loud confrontations. Some of the most heroic acts are quiet demonstrations of what is right in the face of groups whose actions are definitely wrong. Take, for example, the quiet heroism of Rosa Parks, who by refusing to give up her seat in the front of a segregated bus sparked the civil rights movement that ended segregation in this country. Mrs. Parks later reported that she was terrified, and yet she held her seat because it was the right thing to do, and it was the heroic thing to do. Another of the world's quietest and bravest heroes was King Christian X of Denmark. The king was appalled when the Nazis invaded his country during World War II. The Nazis, under the direction of Hitler, ordered all of the Jews of Denmark to sew yellow stars on their clothing so that they could be readily identified and then killed. Quietly, King Christian, not a Jew, sewed a yellow star on his clothing, setting an example for all of the citizens of Denmark who followed his lead. And soon, every Dane in Denmark was wearing yellow stars so that the Nazis were unable to tell which of them were Jews. The Nazis became frustrated and gave up their effort in Denmark to isolate and kill the Jews. King Christian saved the lives of thousands of Jewish people, and what he did, he did without fanfare or bluster. His was a wonderful and quiet, life-saving act of heroism. Now, I have to warn you all that being heroic can be risky business. By standing up for others, you risk being ostracized and being shunned by people, some of whom you thought were your friends. But you see, being willing to take a stand in the face of great pressure to remain silent is what makes ordinary people extraordinary. It's what transforms you into heroic leaders. There was a time that by speaking out, I incurred the wrath of many in the black community in San Jose. I was participating in a forum convened by the local NAACP to talk about racism. This was in the early 1990s, and one of the speakers was a San Jose City Council member whose name was Kathy Cole. She was African American and newly elected to the City Council. At the time, I was a judge, I had never before met Kathy Cole. What she said when it was her turn to speak at this meeting was shocking. I was appalled as I listened to her remarks to this predominantly black audience, which was peppered with virulent racial epithets directed at Mexicans and Asians. After the event, I spoke out. I reported her comments to the local newspaper and the videotape of her remarks was broadcast on the local ABC television station. And that video went viral and was shown all over the country. The uproar in San Jose was loud and long, as it should have been. But many in the black community rose up to defend Kathy Cole and to blast me for speaking out against one of our own. For them, I was the problem. I remember going to the post office one day, which was right next door to the courthouse, and being accosted by a black woman who got in my face 
who was furious with me for publicly denouncing Kathy Cole, who after all, she said, was a sister. And I told her, anyone who preaches hate is no sister of mine, and she shouldn't be one of yours either. Still, it hurt to be impugned by my own community. And yet I knew that that's the risk one takes in speaking out. Those in the white, Mexican, Asian communities and some in the black community demanded Kathy Cole's ouster. A recall campaign was initiated and for the first time ever in the history of the city of San Jose, a sitting city council person was removed from office. Kathy Cole lost her seat on the council and in my opinion, justifiably so. Today, if you are to leave your mark in this world, you must set the example by speaking out against bigotry, by taking a stand against homophobia, by speaking out about Arizona's bigoted immigration laws, by registering to vote as soon as you turn 18, and then always exercising that hard-fought right to vote. When you return to your everyday lives after this conference, I expect each and every one of you smart, hardworking, beautiful, powerful young people. I expect you to be leaders, to be heroic, and to pay it forward by setting the best example for those who are coming after you. So finally, I leave you with the best words of advice I could ever give you and which are 100% guaranteed to bring you success. 100% guaranteed to bring you success in whatever it is you choose to do. So are you ready? Here's the advice. Please listen up. You have two ends, one to sit on and one to think with. Your success depends upon which end you use most. Heads you win, tails you lose. Thank you all.